Here comes Peter Cottontail. How does it look? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, my name is Cory Yoder of Coriander Quilts. Today I have a fun little bunny scrappy pattern free for us all today. So we're going to be talking about that. I have the March pattern of the month hanging behind me. So we're going to talk about that. And Eleni, my daughter, is up to her t-shirt shenanigans again. So I have a new t-shirt on today. You all were fans of her sewing machine design. She came around with this seam ripper design. I thought it was terribly cute. So we also have a new t-shirt over in the shop. The shop is linked below so that you can snag one of these cute little tees if you want to. I'm gonna talk about Joy Filled, the quilt behind me, and I'm gonna save our cute little Easter Bunny block for very last. So make sure you stick around to the end if you're interested in more details about this block. And I've got a little fun tidbit that goes with this one, so be sure and watch till the end. Okay, diving into Joy Filled. This is a $7 pattern for this month. This is a larger pattern than I usually offer for my monthly specials. Usually I do a pattern that is priced at $9.95 and offer it at $5. This is a $14.95 pattern. It's longer than my typical patterns due to all of these fun blocks in this quilt pattern. So it is a $7 pattern of the month available in my Etsy shop in both paper and PDF formats. It is a fat eighth friendly quilt, one fat eighth bundle, and that includes the border here, and then background fabric to complete the quilt top. Sampler patterns are a lot of fun to piece. This one has is it six or seven, six different blocks. So it keeps things interesting to make a bunch of different blocks and they're in different sizes, which is fun also. This quilt finishes at 60 by 72, and I would say it is probably an intermediate level quilt pattern. I will have over on my blog today, in addition to your cute little free block pattern, I'm going to have more colorings of Joy Filled over there so that you can see it in some different fabric lines. This fabric line is Buttercup and Slate, and I just Googled two weeks ago to see if Fat Eighth bundles were still available, and they were at that time, so you may very well be able to snag a Fat Eighth bundle of this fabric line. But if you want a different look or you can't track one down, I will have those recolorings over on my blog so that you have some different fabric options to choose from. And I think that wraps up everything I wanted to say about Joy Filled. If you have questions about that pattern, you can leave that in the comments below and I will be sure to answer those. I always go through and answer all of my comments. The last video that I had where I asked about um, setting information for those Dresden blocks, that was the first video where I had so many comments that I wasn't able to get all of them answered. Maybe by the time this video goes up, I'll have gotten back on track, but that was so awesome to have so many of you chiming in on not only whether you want the wonky log cabin blocks, but how I should set those Dresdens and fun quilt patterns for my sister. I always think it's so much fun. It's probably just as much fun as filming the video as answering the comments and chatting with all of you during the video as when it goes up and then in those days right after. So leave me a comment. I love chatting with you guys. Okay, let's move on to this bunny block. This little cutie right here is the next in my lineup of scrappy quilt blocks that I have been sharing here. Uh, as I mentioned in that last video, they have been in conjunction with the Scrappy Irish Chain Scrap Along that I hosted. I have no new news to report on those blocks. And so if you're in that same camp, we are, we are camping together. So no new news for that, but I do have a scrappy block. And let's just talk about this a little bit. So I went with gray bunny, cute little pink nose, and then pink corner, corner stones here, half square triangles for the corners of my blocks. If you have made any of these scrappy blocks so far, it's gonna feel pretty similar. We've got a lot of two and a half inch squares. We have some stitch and flip corners in this block. I have kind of steered away from using those a little bit when I have been offering these just because they create a little bit more scraps. And if the point is to use up scraps, 
Uh, I didn't know if I should steer away or not, but this one really needed those stitch and flips. They are small, so you will end up with little trimmings and really small for his nose, but it does scrap bust some of these other squares really nicely. So we have our fabric requirements. You're going to see we're starting with half square triangles for these outer corners, and then we move into our stitch and flip units. On page two, we continue with our stitch and flips. Step five is also a stitch and flip unit. You would use the same technique that you were using in the previous steps. And I want to make a comment about pressing open. When I do stitch and flip units, ideally we are pressing away from the center initially. And sometimes we don't have to press open. But if it is a stitch and flip that needs pressed open, I still like to go ahead and press away from the center, make sure that all of my raw edges align on the perimeter of that unit and then trim out those bottom two layers and then go back in and press open. So that is why you will see uh, press away from the center but then also press seams open because I do find that to be the best way to do stitch and flip units that need pressed open. So all of those stitch and flips you are going to press open this little guy down here included. The arrow didn't fit, it completely covered up my illustration, so you'll see that I just noted to the side to press that seam open. And then we are laying out all of the units we've made in addition to the two and a half inch squares. We have a couple one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles you can see here we are using. And then all of your stitch and flip units, half square triangles, and lay those out, sew those together in rows, and then sew your rows together to complete the block. You will find the pressing information for everything illustrated throughout. And one thing I want to make mention of for this block specifically is when you are joining this section right here, these two rows. I am not a pinner, I did not pin here, but this would be one area where I would pin. If you notice where these seams match up here, right here, 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 and here, there are no actual seams that we are butting together to sew those. So you can see how it looks on the back back here. This would be one section where if you aren't a pinner, you might decide, hey, I think I need to pin for this part because those are a little bit trickier. Mine came together pretty nicely. Had I pinned, they probably would have come together even nicer. But just something to, to think about when you are sewing those two rows together right there. It happens down here again, but you don't notice it as much as you do right here. So just keep that in mind. The final seams all get pressed in one direction. And then I have the tip mentioned down here at the bottom that if you are sewing multiple of these blocks together, I would suggest pressing all of your seams open so that you don't double up on your seams if you're butting blocks together. If you would be sewing multiple blocks but adding sashing in between, you could follow the pressing instructions as they are in the pattern. That would only be if you wanted to sew all of your blocks together like what you see here. This block, just like the other blocks in this series, has fun little alternate design that appears when the blocks are sewn together. So this is how it would look if you wanted to sew four blocks across by five blocks down. This is a 12 inch finished block. So this layout would be 48 by 60 as you see pictured here. Of course, you could continue busting your scraps and make more blocks or add borders to make this quilt even larger. I also mocked up what this quilt would look like using just two blocks. You could do more than this, but I wanted to see what it would look like in a runner type setting. So this would be 12 and then 12, 12 plus two. So it would be 12 by 26 in this runner setting. And this little section here that separates the blocks is just two and a half inch blocks sewn together in a strip so that the bunnies aren't butted right up against each other. You could add more of these strips in between the two blocks if you wanted to. And of course you could add additional bunny blocks if you wanted to have a longer table runner. 
So I thought that was a really cute option. I've seen some of you all making pillows using this block. These blocks, another great option. I'm not sure how many total blocks we are up to in this scrappy block series. I've released quite a few. And the little tidbit that I wanted to mention in regard to this block specifically is I have another block that works beautifully with this block that I'm going to be releasing. Um, maybe next week, maybe the following week, it just depends on our filming schedule. But I wanted to make mention of that, that it's another block that's super cute with this one, so that if you wanted to hold off making a larger quilt until you see what that block is, you knew that that was coming. It's really cute and I can't wait to see them together. I had thought I might release both of them in this video, but I didn't get the instructions for that second one written up or my block made, so it's just gonna have to wait for a future video. But keep an eye out for that because I think that's going to be adorable. So all of the information to anything I mentioned is over on the blog, is linked in that description box below the video. So you can click on those and zip right over to the blog, grab your free block pattern. This is a PDF free block pattern. I will also have, like I said, um, links to this pattern below and more digital mock-ups for that over on the Coriander Quilts blog. If you have any questions about anything I mentioned here today, be sure to let me know and I hope you have a wonderful Saturday.